holistic, traditional black midwives were just nowhere on the internet. And then I found my angel of a midwife. Having a midwife was literally the best decision that I could have made for me and my family. And I just remember being in that position of being pregnant and not feeling like, like an OB was the right route for me. And I just wasn't feeling it. I went to an OB, it wasn't very personable, it wasn't in alignment, it didn't feel good, it didn't empower me. And I didn't know what to do. Like scrolling through Instagram was a fail. I felt like a lot of the Midwest were in Atlanta. Um, Google was a fail. Holistic, traditional black midwives were just nowhere on the internet. And then I found my angel of a midwife. So I have some questions written down. So somebody asked, what is it like to have a midwife? Having a midwife is like having one-on-one -on -one relationship with a girlfriend, a mother, an auntie that is medically certified to take care of you while you are pregnant. So you have the best friend motherly aspect and then the, um, the certified aspect in one. Having a midwife is like having somebody who you can call at any time, even though, you know, I mean, and mind you, I'm gonna speak from my midwife experience because I had the best midwife in all of the land, okay? And I know not everyone has the midwife experience that I had. You feel the one-on-one -on -one treatment because of the exclusivity of midwives and you choosing each other. It's like a marriage, okay? It's like having a midwife is so essential to starting a family or cultivating a family. Choosing the right midwife is one of the most important decisions I could have made in starting a family for the first time, just because a midwife is somebody who can be with you forever. Uh, midwifery is much different in my perception of the traditional OB or doctor relationship because a midwife becomes a part of your family a midwife also helps change and guide the trajectory of where your family is going in the way that you start life and the way that you raise your children. Just the tradition that you go back to. If I didn't have Rashad as my midwife, I don't know if I would have even had the birth process that I had just because she was so supportive of everything that I instinctually already knew, but she just affirmed everything that a lot of people try to deny me of having a natural birth. And she just affirmed like, this is what we do. This is where we come from. I'm a fourth generation midwife. These have been passed down to me through word, through song, through dance, through praise. And this is nothing new. Like whatever you're thinking, whatever you're feeling, is things that you're, you're remembering because these are things that come from your bloodline. And I think I had a different midwife experience just because we did have a unassisted birth. Um, but just for the simple fact that postpartum, my midwife would be at my home, a midwife would bathe, um, help me bathe and take my postpartum bath, my midwife would cook for me, um, bring me all of the treats that she'd be bringing all of her postpartum my families, cobblers, the garden, it's just a different type of level of care. So having a midwife is like having a motherly figure take care of you and guide you who is also certified. And although she is a fourth generation midwife and this has been passed down to her verbally, physically, being there, also is certified and has gone to school and has worked very hard to be the skilled midwife that she is today. So the next question is, when did I find my midwife? So my pregnancy journey was very interesting because I was not trying to believe that I was pregnant and I was pushing it off and I had missed a certain amount of periods and I was like, okay, let me just take this test. I found out that I was pregnant actually on my birthday of 2020. I'm scared. Can you tell I'm procrastinating? Yes. <laughs> That's why I said, come on. Okay. So. Uh-uh. It is... It is a divine day. It is August 18th, 2020, at approximately like, what is it, like 9.30? Probably 9.36. You got your phone? Mm-hmm. 
Nine thirty. Nine thirty. See him? I just, I just know. Mm -hmm. He, you know, he a little iffy. Mm-hmm. Has to be really bad, so I'm trying to hurry. Do not hurry with this, please. October 12, 2020. And that was when I saw the OB. When I saw the OB, it was nothing like I wanted to have. I ended up getting billed $8,000 in the first visit, and it just was not the experience that I wanted to have. And I ended up finding my midwife a month later, um, towards the end of October, early November. And I was already 16 weeks pregnant or something like that. I had two different due dates because I saw two different professionals. I had an ultrasound and then I saw a doctor and both of them had two different due dates. So I got my midwife, let's just say early November. And the first time I talked to her on the phone, it was like, this is it. This is the person who was going to help me, assist me and guide me into this journey that I'm so excited for, accepting me with open arms at about 16, 15 weeks pregnant. So the next question is, what is it like to have a midwife amongst a pandemic in 2020, 2021? We had in-person and virtual calls. So um, our virtual calls would be on Zoom, and then our in-person, she would come to my home and we would sit and talk and she would educate. The virtual sessions were very much like counseling sessions or therapy sessions. Um, they lasted anywhere from one hour to an hour and a half, although they were only supposed to be about an hour. <laughs> Sometimes they went to two. But my midwife always held space for us because this was the first time that we were embarking on this type of journey having a midwife and doing things in a completely different way than a lot of people in our family. So she was patient enough to answer questions, to affirm to us different things that we can do, ways we can bond, um, as well as breaking just fears generationally or birthing fears or just family fears. And she really poured love into us. I'm so grateful for that because unlike the OB visit that I had, it was just very black and white and in and out. Through our virtual and in-person appointments, it just really cultivated a relationship of trust, of understanding, and just kind of being friends, to be honest. One thing, this is kind of off subject, but one thing that was really troubling to me was I know somebody who gave birth in a hospital and she said she kind of felt physically violated just because different people would come in check her vaginally and it was like she's never seen these people she doesn't know them some of them have attitudes but because it's protocol they're literally inserting themselves inside her yoni trying to check the baby and she was just like this really feels violating i think through the relationship going back to what i was originally saying when you have a midwife and you get to know them and you're sitting with them and you know this is the person that's going to be there when I go through the birthing process, it's not going to be anybody else. I'm not going to see any assistants. I'm not going to see any people I've never even met before, people who I don't even know on a first name or last name basis. It just really puts you at ease in knowing that this is a person that's helping me through the journey and this is the person who is going to be there when it matters the most and when it's time and when I need her most. So I think in those sessions, it just really helps you bond and come to understanding of each other's wants and needs in the way that she works as a midwife. I feel like I'm getting really red. So if I'm red, it's just something that happens when I talk passionately. My midwife, every time she touched me, she always asked, is it okay to touch you? Is it okay to touch baby? And at first I was like, yeah, this is like, we're good. This is what, you know, I, I, I wanted you here to do these things, but I didn't even take into consideration the violation that some women may feel. So when I heard that story um, about a girlfriend of mine in the hospital, it kind of clicked and it just made me realize how intentional Rashad is in every single thing that she does through midwifery. Our home visits were also very hands-on educational. 
Um, she would teach Kai how to feel for the baby, to see the position of the baby. My midwife is an OG midwife. She is a traditional midwife, although a lot of these words and adjectives are very subjective for each person. But when I say traditional, my midwife comes to you with <laughs> minimal to no technology. She will write you a paper receipt and she does everything with her hands. She does have people that you can go to if you wanted more technology, uh, ultrasounds and scans and things like that. And if you do want testing, she does have people that can help you with those things that she trusts, that, has, that she's cultivated a relationship with. So she's very hands-on in teaching you and empowering you how to feel for your baby, what the baby's doing, how your body's feeling, why your body is feeling the way it's feeling. Um, if your body is feeling a certain way, she might suggest natural remedies, natural supplements, or things that you can do to put your body at ease. But it very much is already a partnership because she already knows that I am the type of person who takes care of my body and realizes that my body is a temple. She knows that I stretch, she knows that I meditate, she knows that I work out, she knows that I eat clean. So because she's holding me accountable in that space, she can also tell me, hey, these are some natural supplements that you can take, or these are the foods that you, you should probably, that your body is craving, or your baby is probably craving. And together we work in tandem to create the most peaceful birthing process as well as the most comfortable birthing process. My midwife also offers other services as well. So if you're looking for lactation or, I don't remember the categories, but there are a lot of add-ons that you can add on to your midwifery package. She even offered baby concierge packages to where her assistant would curate a list of baby products that would be great for you based off of your needs and your wants. Say you are wanting baby brands only from small businesses, she would curate you a list of necessities of things that you would want based off of brands that were only small businesses. Or if you were the type of person who wanted a sustainable baby product, she would create a list of sustainable baby products. If you were somebody who just didn't care and just wanted the best of the best of in general, then she would create a list for you as well. There's different types of add-ons that you can add with midwifery where it's not just somebody who's delivering your baby. Because I did find Rasha um, very late in my pregnancy journey, it I didn't really have, I can't really tell you how the first trimester went, but the second and third didn't differ too much. But I would say that most of our talks consisted of body education, mindfulness education, and diet education. Those are the three things that I would say that were questions that we had in our sessions. Offer advice on things that I could do in those three categories. Obviously, as the third trimester came into place, things would change with my body where I would kind of need help and she would recommend different things to me and then I would make changes and then we would come together and say, okay, this was progressive or I still need a little bit more help there and we would do some tweaking. Towards the end of my pregnancy, we went from every other week to every single week. And if I was in the same state as my midwife, it would have been in-person house calls on a weekly basis. And last but not least, what is the birth plan with your midwife? So my midwife is just, you guys are gonna be tired of me and my love for my midwife, but don't hate, okay? This is amongst one of the most important things, something that every person should do, midwife or not, is have a birth plan and tell everyone who is involved in your birth about the birth plan and making sure that everyone is keeping each other accountable. What is a birth plan? A birth plan is kind of the needs and wants that you want during your birthing process. So having a birth plan is super important because it, it lets everyone who is included in the birth know exactly what you want. In hospital births, I know a lot of people can be very pushy as far as epidurals, certain IVs and things like that. But when you do have a birth plan and you have somebody who is advocating for you when you're going through the birthing process, whether you're having an easy birth or a birth that is much more challenging, it is some it is something that is on paper where somebody in your who is whoever is in your corner can say, hey, I know this might be difficult for you right now, but you can push through this. This is your plan and I know that you can do it. Or in the cases when you have random nurses or a different type of doctor who is coming in and helping you at the time, it is something to let them know what your wants and needs are for your birth process. Now, in having a midwife, the birth plan was amongst one of the first things that was just kind of put in the back of our heads of what we wanted our birth to look like. 
Um, she gave us different examples of, do you want music in your birth? Do you want to give birth in your bed? Do you want to give birth in water? Do you want to give birth in your tub? Do you want certain things around? Do you want flowers around? Do you want an altar? Do you want a candle burning? Do you want something symbolic of your indigenous background? One thing that she mentioned is people will take land from wherever their home is, specifically indigenous tribes, take land from the reservation and put it under their birth tub and so that they can give birth on sacred land, which I think is the most beautiful. I'm getting chills to, to, to give birth on sacred land, which is once again, one of the most beautiful things that is something that you don't necessarily think about when you are not brought up in a home birth type of community. So planting these little seeds in us of what we want our birth to look like just made us really excited because that's not something that you, that you really get asked or that's not something that we were asked when we did see the OB. So from there, our thoughts kind of ran wild and what we wanted um, and how we wanted our son to come Earthside. What are some of the things that we wanted him to see or to smell or to remember when he came Earthside? And I know some of y'all are probably like, he's a baby, he's not gonna know, he's not gonna know. The instincts of a newborn and the remembrance of a newborn, in my opinion, are something that unforgettable on a subconscious level. And the last question that people want to know is how much does it cost to have a midwife? Now, midwifery, once again, is different. It's not gonna be the same across the board. Being in California is a more quote unquote expensive state. I think the average price of midwifery is anywhere from like $3,000 to $9,000, depending on where you live. Very reasonably priced considering hospital bills are like 30,000 on average. If we can, lean in the way of making midwifery acceptable for a lot of insurances, we will create better birthing environments for a lot of families. And in a perfect world, midwifery would be accepted by most insurances to create a more peaceful, blissful, beautiful birth experience for many more families. Having a midwife was the best of best choices that I could have made throughout this entire pregnancy journey and every single child that I have after my son will be alongside my midwife and I wouldn't trade that for anything. It was definitely the most important part of having a natural pregnancy and a beautiful pregnancy that I will always advocate for midwifery. I'll always advocate for crimson and fig midwifery. Let me say that, a traditional midwife who is Rashad. So that is it for today's video and what is what is it like to have a midwife. If you have any follow-up questions, put them down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload. Peace!